honor. Commitment. Pride. Tradition. Intensity. Sportsmanship. When combined, all of these attributes create a legend. But how do we preserve a legacy? By remembering and honoring men and women who dedicated their lives. The Coweta Sports Hall of Fame is dedicated to both preserving a rich legacy and contributing to the future. Welcome to the 21st Annual Coweta Sports Hall of Fame. family members that have come, thank you for all your friends that have supported you throughout your career with these inductees. They appreciate you being here and so do we and we hope we see you back next year. And now I'm going to turn it over to Rob Rass who is going to bless our evening and our food. And again, thanks for coming. Hello, welcome. Uh, one quick note. Our inductees will be served food first, and then the caterers will call you to, to come receive the food. So that's my instructional part. I hope I did all right. Uh, thank you all for being here. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, God, we just, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Lord, full of life, full of purpose. Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have poured out on this great community. It is evident tonight. With the people who are being inducted, Lord, uh, having known and uh, each one of them personally, I can attest, Lord, to their commitment to excellence, their integrity, Lord, and the fact that the gifts that you gave each one of them, they took them and used them to the fullest of their ability. And through that, they have inspired many. And so, Lord, we just thank you again tonight for each one of the four. We thank you for the fellowship in this room. God, all the great memories that are we've, we've already been recalling and uh, just the cherished memories and the relationships that have been built over the years. So Lord, continue to bless us as we remember. Bless this food to nourish our bodies and make us a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we would like to thank some volunteers that help us each and every year. First and foremost is Laura Sandlin Horton with the Cavity County School Systems and CEC and her students put together our Hall of Fame video. Paul Schumann is over a decade on the video production. Thank you, Paul. Lynn Wood providing security each time we have a banquet. And each Coweta's ROTC led by Pete Merrill comes to help. At this time, I'd like to introduce the uh, Sports Hall of Fame Board of Directors, please hold, hold your applause to the end. President is Joe Crane Sr., mm -hmm. Secretary Trey Baggerly, and Treasurer Mike Barber. Billy Arnold, Blake Bass Chairman, James Brantley, Rob Brass, Walter Drake, Hugh Farmer, Terry Head, Otis Jones III, Carl McKnight, Walker Moody, Randa Reese, Shell Roberts, 
Jody Shepard, and Vernon Strickland. Thank you for all your hard work. Now I'd like to recognize our corporate and goal sponsors. Corporate sponsor, once again, is Newton Utilities. Our goal sponsor, sponsors are City of Hope, Coyote Fayette EMC, Crane Oil, the Drake Family, Georgia Power Company, Mike Fitzpatrick Ford, Piedmont Hospital, Strickland DeBro, and United Bank. Thank you for all your generosity. In addition to recognizing uh, ath outstanding athletes and coaches and contributors to sports in Cowdy County, we also give the Johnny Brown Scholarship. This scholarship has been presented since 2007. We give it to outstanding local high school students, student athletes, and we've given out over $63,000 since that time. I want to thank all of those that have contributed toward our scholarship fund and also the net profits from our banquet. They also go to our scholarship fund. Last year's recipients, if you will look at page 47, you will see our recipients from last year, the local high school students. We will be awarding scholarships in the next couple of months at other area high schools. And again, we want to say thank you to those that have contributed toward our scholarship. Thank you. I've seen a lot of our previous inductees here tonight. If you have a past inductee, please stand and let us recognize you. Thank y'all for coming, congratulations. Good evening and welcome to the induction phase of our ceremony tonight. My name is Otis Jones and I'll be your MC for the rest of the night. I want to welcome everybody and thank everyone for coming tonight. We've got four outstanding inductees to recognize tonight. A few housekeeping items before we get started. If you will, please turn off your cell phones and all electronics so we don't distract from the induct inductees. Um, to the inductees, uh, once you come to the stage, we'll make an individual picture and then immediately following the ceremony, if all four of you will please grab your plaques and immediately come to the stage for a group picture. I know everybody wants to talk and congratulate the inductees after the ceremony, but if you will, give them time to come straight to the stage. We'll get a group picture real quick and then they can uh, talk to you after the banquet. Um, there's one other person I want to introduce before we start our banquet. Uh, Lauren Dozier is here. She is one of our scholarship recipients from last year. Lauren is an East Coweta grad and currently a student at GCSU in Milledgeville. Lauren, where are you? There you are. Congratulations to you, Lauren. I will call each inductee individually to the stage. Uh, but before that, when I announce their name, if you will, focus your attention on the two screens. We'll show a brief video, and if you'll hold your applause till after the video, I will then invite the inductee to the stage. You can then applaud them at that time. So with that, we'll get started. Our first inductee tonight is Coach Blake Bass. Blake Bass is a native of Newnan, Georgia. And in 1971, he graduated from Newnan High School, where he played several sports. However, football was always his favorite. His senior year, Bass received several athletic awards, including being named captain of the Newnan High football team. Blake graduated from West Georgia College in 1976. And two years later, Blake returned to Newnan to teach and coach. Coach Bass was an instrumental factor in Blake's career as both a coach 
and administrator. In total, as a player and coach, Blake was with Max 16 years, longer than anyone else during the 29 years Max was the head coach at Noonan. In 1979, Blake became defensive coordinator for the Cougars, and he held that position until he left coaching in 1990. In 1981, Noonan played for the Class Quad A state championship at Drake Stadium. Blake had a 35-year career in education. After teaching for 14 years, he began his tenure as an administrator. He served as assistant principal at East Coweta High School from 1990 until 1994 principal at Central Middle School from 1994 to 1997, and then as Director of Human Resources for the Coweta County School System. In 2004, Blake was named Superintendent of the School System. Over the years, Blake served his community through his civic work. He was named the 2011 Citizen of the Year by the Noonan Coweta Chamber of Commerce. For his support of the arts in Coweta County, the patrons of the Nixon Center for the Performing and Visual Arts recognized Blake with its highest honor, the Richard Brooks Visionary Award of Distinction. In 2021, the Coweta County School System honored Bass by naming its seventh and newest middle school, Blake Bass Middle School. Blake Bass. 2024 inductee into the Coweta Sports Hall of Fame. Please, <laughs> please welcome Coach Blake Bass. Thank you very much. I want to thank the directors of the Coweta County Sports Hall of Fame uh, for this award. I want to thank Bob Heberlin and Radar Brantley for your nomination to this. And then I want to thank my family. First of all, my wife, Lila. Uh, we've been married 45 years and uh, she's been through all of this that you saw with me. Uh, I want to thank my mother and my dad. Uh, my mom, she's the one that gives me, that had given me the determination and uh, my drive. Uh, she's 92 years old. Uh, couldn't be here tonight, but she can't wait to see the video of it. Uh, my dad passed away several years ago, but he was my first coach and he taught me everything I needed to know about sports. Uh, my son Chris and his family's here, Stephanie and my two grandchildren, Ethan and Maggie. Uh, my son Stephen could not be here. Him and his wife Maddie are in uh, Salt Lake and we're very proud of Maddie right now. Uh, she is going through uh, she is donating bone marrow for her mother and her last draw was yesterday and they just could not make the trip. Uh, so uh, we miss them being here. Also my sister Amanda and her children Katie and Carly, my brother Mark uh, and his daughter Morgan is here and my brother Brent couldn't be here. He's got some health issues but I'm not the athlete in the family. Uh, those two were. Uh, Mark signed and uh, played at Georgia. Uh, my brother Brent, he uh, signed with Georgia Southern and in fact got a national championship ring uh, for that effort. But I'm the one that ended up coaching. Several other people I want to recognize here tonight 
that are here. If you coached with me, could you just stand, please? <laughs> Folks, these guys know Friday nights is just a show. Uh, we put on a performance on Friday night, but the work, these guys will tell you, the work takes place on Sundays and throughout the week of practice. And, you know, you, you've heard I, I will go to war or fight with any of these guys. If you've coached together over the years, and guys, I appreciate your friendship. I uh, appreciate what you've meant to me. Uh, it's, you know what we've done together, and I appreciate it. Players, I see a lot of players out here that played on the team that I was uh, coached. I appreciate y'all being here tonight. Uh, another group of people. I am now uh, assistant head of school at Trinity Christian, and my Trinity family's here tonight. Uh, my three principals, uh, Sherry Randolph and her husband Quincy, uh, Kimmy Jones, Adam Vincent, are here along with uh, Todd Hall and Jennifer Hall from the uh, Lions Club, and Samantha and Chris Priest are here. Uh, guys, thank y'all for your support that y'all have been giving me. I've been very honored over the years to have several recognitions given to me, but this award means so much to me because it's very special. This is where it all began. Uh, if not for football and Max Bass, more than likely I would have had a different life. I wouldn't have gone to Villarica <laughs> and brought home my wife, Lila. Uh, I wouldn't have built relationships over the years that was very helpful with me in my career uh, as an administrator. And I all liked Coach Bass. Uh, and in true Max form, he would never let me forget it. Uh, <laughs> he'd always want to know when was the check coming. Uh, Nancy, I know that you more than anybody else uh, know it to be true that Max not only helped me, but all of the players that played for him. And for all of them, I want to say, Thank you to what he did for us. Uh, this week I got an email from Danny Chronic. And uh, Danny and I went to East Coweta High School at the same year. And he couldn't be here tonight and he just wanted to congratulate me. And I told Danny that I had the honor that a lot of people never had, to, had before. And that was that as a coach, playing as a player, a coach, and an administrator, I had the fortune of coaching with four of the highest winning coaches in the state of Georgia. Max Bass, Danny Chronic, Coach Robert Herring, and now Coach Kenny Dallas. That is a lineup. A lot of you don't know that I coached basketball uh, when I was in high school. I coached Walter and Michael uh, in basketball. And uh, I had the pleasure of working with head basketball coaches that were winners. Terrell Reed, Harold Goodman, Paula Jones, and John Thrower. They taught me a lot. I have been around a lot of winners, and that means a lot to a coach. I want to congratulate my fellow inductees. Uh, I coached Walter, I coached Michael. I watched 
Lisa as she uh, came up through her career. Uh, I could tell you a lot of stories about these guys. Walter, you could never shut him down in basketball. He could dribble a basketball. He could drive a lane. He could make, we didn't have three points back then, but he could make those shots uh, like anybody. And Michael Cheever, he's probably the dumbest, <laughs> smartest kid I've ever seen. <laughs> um, he went to Georgia Tech, probably made close to 1,600 on his SAT, and uh, doesn't have a lick of common sense. <laughs> we were playing Riverdale one night, and yeah, you know what I'm fixing to say, don't you? We were playing Riverdale one night, and uh, they were killing us on a sweep to the wide side of the field. And Michael wanted the defensive ends, I got my two defensive ends together and said, Michael, you go to the wide side every time. And he looks at me and said, what's the wide side? <laughs> and I said, the hash marks. He said, I mean, he's been playing football four years. Don't know what the wide side of the field, smartest kid on the field. And I said, look at me, I'll tell you where to go. <laughs> he gets out there. And I point. He goes over, he gets lines up, we shut the play down. The next play, the wide side's over here. And I go, well, if you've ever been on a sideline, you know that things get pretty hectic. I turn around, here comes Max calling time out. And I look, he said, we only got 10 people on the field. And I look up there and there's Michael. <laughs> and I say, Michael, what are you doing? He said, I thought you meant come down here. <laughs> um, but listen, it, coaching all the kids has been a pleasure over the years. Uh, I would not have given up anything if I, for my 15 years in coaching, and, I, and I'm very grateful. One last thing before I close. Three years ago, a tornado came through, and Newton High School was destroyed. I see a few board members out here tonight. Frank Farmer, where's Frank? Larry Robertson? What y'all are doing with Newton High School right now is unbelievable. Make sure the Board of Education and Evan Horton know that what y'all are doing is much appreciated. Thank you. Listen, thank you for this award, and I appreciate it very much. And Otis, I hope I didn't go over my time. As Randa mentioned in her opening remarks, this is our 21st banquet. If you'd like to uh, learn about the history of our Hall of Fame, please look on page six of your program and it does give you a history of the Hall of Fame. One thing uh, I don't remember if Mike Barber mentioned, we do give these scholarships each year. Well, we'll be giving five next year. So if you have it in your heart at the end of the year or when you get ready to, to make your charitable contributions, please keep the Hall of Fame uh, in mind. We, we uh, sell advertisements and we, we fund our scholarships through donations. So if you would like to make a donation to the Hall of Fame, please see a board member or you can mail a check in as well. Also on page three of your program is the criteria to be inducted in the Hall of Fame or to be nominated for the Hall of Fame. If you have someone you'd like to nominate, please let a board member know. I actually have some nomination forms. If you'd like them tonight or just contact a board member and they can get those for you. Our next inductee is Michael Cheever. Michael Cheever was born in College Park, Georgia. 
and moved to Newnan when he was eight years old. He starred as an offensive lineman for Coach Max Bass at Newnan High School before going on to play at the collegiate level at Georgia Tech and then with the Jacksonville Jaguars of the National Football League. In high school, Cheever lettered in football four years, three times in basketball and twice in soccer. At the center position for the Cougars, he was named All-American by Super Preps magazine and was tabbed the number 31 prospect in the state of Georgia by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He went on to play at Georgia Tech, where he earned the starting center job as a redshirt freshman in 1992 and was named third-team freshman All-American by Football News. In 1994, Cheever led the team with 63 knockdown blocks. He allowed just one sack during his four-year career on the flats. Following his senior year, Cheever was named All-Conference and All-America and was invited to the Senior Bowl, where he was the starting center for the South team. Cheever was selected in the second round of the 1996 NFL Draft by the Jacksonville Jaguars at number 60 overall, and he was the first center chosen. In the 96 season, the Jags made a historic playoff run. They beat the Denver Broncos at Mile High Stadium in the AFC Divisional game. The Broncos were led by John Elway, Shannon Sharp, and Terrell Davis. Cheever helped the Jaguars rush for more than 200 yards, and the coaching staff named him the offensive player of the game. A back injury cut Cheever's playing career short during the 1998 season, and he transitioned into business. Michael Cheever, 2024 inductee into the Coweta Sports Hall of Fame. Please welcome Michael Cheever. Thank you. Um, and coach, I didn't figure out what the wide side of the field is. I had to make a few, I had to make a few calls at center. Uh, so thank you for, for coaching me up on that. Um, hey, Coweta County Hall of Fame, wow. Um, thank you to each of you for being here. Uh, my gratitude to the Hall of Fame for putting this together. Um, Otis, uh, Radar, uh, Blake Bass, the Arnold family, Cheryl Roberts, Trey Baggerly, uh, Hugh Farmer, the Knights, um, Mr. Moody, I saw Mr. Moody here, he cracks me up. Um, <clears throat> so there are some people that are not here that I'd like to thank as well. Uh, my mama Kay, um, AKA Santa Claus. Uh, my pop, um, he was my great grandfather. Uh, my granddaddy Leonard, my grandma and grandpa Cheever, Max Bass, uh, Tom Rowe, Nadine Taylor, Terrell Reed, his son, Todd is here. and. Uh, so, uh, Coach Stallings, actually, I did not know Coach Goodman was going to be here, so he's on that list, and uh, it's great to see him. I, 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 I hear that you are speaking positive words just like you did in my life and to many others, and uh, I, I'm glad that that's continuing. Um, <clears throat> Coach Hodges, Miss Landreth, the only teacher in Newton High School who controlled Ryan Brooks. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Williamson, uh, Mr. Smith, and Alan Woods. Um, <clears throat> I stand here before you today receiving this honor, not because of what I did in Coweta County. I stand here because of what I learned in Coweta County and, and those who taught it to me. Um, as, uh, as we heard here, I moved to Coweta County when I was eight years old. Uh, we lived actually in Sharpsburg uh, on a farm. Uh, my brothers are here, Charlie, Craig, Matt, and uh, Alden. I see you back there. Um, <clears throat> my sister Jennifer is not here. She's in New York, and my brother Lenny's not here, so we miss them. Um, we had fun. 
growing up in the country, in the woods, playing in the fields. Um, we had cows, we uh, baled hay, worked a garden, and uh, it was just a ton of fun. And uh, I, I really treasure that time growing up, and, and it roots me and grounds me as I go through life. Um, <clears throat> As I transitioned, we, we went to a little small school uh, there on the farm that I lived on. And uh, seventh grade, I transitioned to East Coweta. And so that was the start of uh, four different schools in five years. And so it was pretty quick. And East Coweta at the time was six through 12. And so I got on the bus, right? And, and this was an eye opener for me coming off a little church farm and getting onto the bus at, at, to go to East Coweta, six through 12. There was people with knives. There was people chewing on that bus. There was people who were waiting until they were 16 years old so they could drop out of school, right? And um, you know, it was uh, it was a, it, I'll just say it was an eye-opening experience for me getting on the bus going to East Coweta. Um, in the eighth grade, I uh, went out for spring spring practice, and and I don't even know if we had pads at East Coweta in the eighth grade spring practice, um, but they did it right before they did the noon in spring practice, and. What happened was, is I found out that the players from East Coweta, and I don't know if Coach Cronick's here or not, but he shut this down pretty quick. So they would, it was a little farm system, all right? So if you went to the spring practice at East Coweta and Max found out that you might be good, then all of a sudden you went to Noonan High School <laughs> spring practice. And so I went to spring practice at Noonan and I got in a line <clears throat> and I didn't know what to do, so I get, I, I, I'm in line. And uh, Radar says, listen, peanuts go to the end of the line. So I'm a peanut, right? So I go to the end of the line, and the line was where you get your equipment. So I'm, I'm waiting in line to get my equipment. When you get to the end of the box, what's left is what's there for you, okay? And so I, I get these pads. I never put pads on. I played basketball and soccer, and I swam when I was a kid, but I never played football. And uh, so I, I'm... Uh, not quite sure how to put all this stuff on, but I get it on and I go out to practice and they say, well, you, you go over there with the linemen, right? And so I look over where the linemen are and there's this grizzly bear of a human being standing over there. He's got a beard like this. He's got some chew in the top and the bottom. And he's like, hey, he's standing there. I'm like, Oof. So I go over there and so we start running some drills and doing some stuff and I'm kind of moving around and all of a sudden he's like, Jeeva. First practice. It, stand over there. You're gonna be safety support. So I go standing there, right? And I hear, Hut! and all of a sudden I see two people running at me. And it's Russell Duffy and Eric Williams, right? Or Eric Phillips, half track. I don't know. So they come running at me, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, my goodness, I think they're they're running really fast at me. And I'm <laughs> standing there, and all of a sudden, bam! And they hit me, right? And all I know is I'm laying flat on my back, right? And I'm like, help, help! I, I can't see. And I feel these arms just grab me. It's like, no crap you can't see, son. You're looking out your damn ear hole. And my helmet had gotten knocked sideways. And so I get my helmet back straight. I'm standing there, I'm a little bit in shock. I don't know what just happened. So my mom picks me up in practice. <clears throat> Sweetie, how'd it go? I've turned it on. I said, mom. <laughs> the coat just spit, the thing that spun coming at me, I knocked out a ear hole, I couldn't see a thing, I was terrible. She goes, well, sweetie, you do not have to play football anymore. I was like, I don't? She goes, no, I will talk to your father when I get home. I'm like, sweet. We go to the house, I'm sitting in the back room, I hear dad come walking in, he's in the kitchen talking to mom. <laughs> I sit back there, I'm like, come on, mom. <laughs> door opens, he looks in, he goes, you're playing. Shuts the door. <laughs> so thank you, dad, I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, I uh, also want to thank um, a fellow inductee, Vernon Strickland, who we were just talking about teaching each other how to hit. Um, but I want to thank uh, Robbie Hogan, Hank Sinkfield, Tweet to Marcus Johnson and James Warner, because those four taught me how to play football um, from a player standpoint. Uh, from a coach standpoint, I had great coaches, and I'm, and I'm super thankful for them. Um, those, those four, um, they really took me under their wing. Um, they allowed me to hit with them. That's, by the way, how you learn how to hit, is you get hit, and then you figure out 
I need to do something a little different. Right? So I learned how to hit, and uh, I, th I thank them for that. Um, also, in the ninth grade, I went to Central, and uh, Blake Bass was my basketball coach. Um, and, and I got to tell you something. <clears throat> Blake coached the best team that I've ever played on, the only undefeated team that I've ever played on was that basketball team. And I'm gonna tell you something, and now I know where it comes from, so I got your mama to thank. Uh, but I, the grit, the perseverance, the determination that we had, we were just in better shape, and we worked harder than any team that we played. We would go through practice, <clears throat> and at the end of every practice, he had this plastic thing that he would wear, right? And he had this sweatshirt on top of it, and he would be like, all right, let's go. And he would lead us around that gym doing fitness until we were all exhausted, right? So I have no idea how exhausted he was, but I'll tell you what, Coach, I always remember that being at that Madras gym and, and you know, those coaches and those practices you put us through, and, and uh, thank you. I appreciate it. So uh, <clears throat> come out of the ninth grade, and now I'm moving to Noonan High School, going to the high school, and uh, we have summer practice. And summer practice, uh, which I don't even think they allow anymore what we used to do, by the way, y'all. Um, <laughs> but, but summer practice, so we had, I think, a workout and run in the morning, and then we had to have a practice later in the afternoon. And so um, <clears throat> uh, my mom would drop me off, and uh, I would stay with uh, Matt Veal, a friend of mine. And so I'd stay with Matt. And, and uh, <clears throat> that summer, as we were getting ready to go uh, into, uh, into, my, into my 10th grade year, um, I would uh, uh, be at Matt Beal's house and then we would go over and practice and something happened and um, it was very difficult, it was very, um, it was very traumatic to me, right? And um, so I'll, I'll break it down real quick. So a rumor got started about me, right? And um, there was two parts to it. So the first part which is true, was that I found, some, uh, I found something in the bathroom, some magazines in the bathroom down at the bottom of the stack that I probably shouldn't have been looking at. And uh, I was looking at them. Now, the second part of the rumor is not true because um, I did not go blind, right? Um, <laughs> but this rumor that got started about me, um, apparently it, it, was, it, it caught a lot of energy, right? And uh, so I start new school, Noonan High School, and uh, Everyone knew, right? And, and when I say everyone, I mean y'all, all the girls knew, and, and all the guys knew. And I, you know, I'm walking down the hall, and it's prototype of a movie, right? Like, <laughs> I'm walking down the hall, I see people looking, right? And then I walk by and I hear the whispers, right? My locker's decorated, interestingly. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the, the toughest part, the toughest part was, uh, the, uh, the cafeteria. So go through the line, get your food, and walk out into the cafeteria, and there's nowhere to sit, and there's nobody gonna let me sit with them, right? And um, that, was, that was really, I would say that year was one of the most difficult years of my life. Um, there are two people here that I would like to thank. Laura Mansour. And, and Joni Scarborough, I say Joni Owens, uh, but these two young ladies, they made a place for me at their table. And so I'm honored to have them here at my table tonight. And I thank you both. <clears throat> um, that season, as you've heard, I had a little difficulty with football vernacular. And uh, so that season, I was competing in the 10th grade, I was competing for uh, right tackle with Ryan Brooks. And going into the season, com coming out of camp, uh, Coach Davis, who's our offensive line coach, Coach Davis says, <clears throat> look, you boys both had a good camp, and here's the way that we're going to determine who's gonna be the starter. You're gonna alternate series, and we're gonna grade the film, and whoever grades out the highest is gonna be a starter this year. And <clears throat> so uh, first, Ryan was, Ryan was a year ahead of me, so Ryan had the first series. And uh, we must have scored because I was on the kickoff team. So we kick off to them. And I just laid this guy out on the kickoff team. I was so happy. I jumped up. I was looking for wins at the time. Um, so I jump up and I'm excited. People are popping me in the head. I come running over the sideline. People are popping me on the head and high fives. And I'm jacked up. And, I'm, I'm, and all of a sudden, I hear this. Javer! All right, that's Mitch Davis. That's my impression of Mitch, right? 
and I look up and I'm like, uh, what? Well, I was supposed to be on the field in the huddle and I wasn't, I was over celebrating on the sideline. So I, I go running to go in and he stops me and he says, uh uh. And he sat me down on the bench and he goes, you're benched for the year and benched me for the year. So I sat there for a year and, and I practiced and I got better and um, I just sat there for a year. And it was a tough year, as you, as, as you heard, it was a tough year for me. So <clears throat> as that year continued, got through that year and um, <clears throat> Brian Brooks came to me and, and in the, in the, you know, after the season, um, and as I, as I told you, socially, it was a very tough year for me. I didn't have friends. I was at a brand new school and, um, I, you know, was a little bit of an outcast there. And um, Ryan says, hey, Cheever, he says, come on. He goes, you're going to be with me now. And I said, what? And he goes, you're going to be with me now. And he, he took me into his friend group, and Ryan had a bunch of friends, and Danny back, and um, I, I, I just thank you because, you know, you changed my life in, in a great way. They brought me into their family. Um, I got a second family. Donna Brooks is here. Richard's in heaven smiling um, at us, and uh, Rebecca and Robin. And, um, I, uh, I love you, and I appreciate you both. The um, <clears throat> football got better <laughs> the year after that. Um, I, um, um, I remember, and I'm going to tell you something about Max Bass, as I was standing there that season, because he backed Mitch's decision, and uh, um, I was standing there, and, and I remember he grabbed you by the back of the kind of pulling you down. You know, or, or. I'm standing there, and he goes, look out on that field. I look out on the field, and he goes, he goes, I want you to tell me what potential is worth out there. I was like, what is potential worth? Hmm. I'm scratching my head. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know, coach. He goes, it ain't worth crap. And that's why you're standing over here with me. Now go back and think about that. I'm not going to the piano. <laughs> but you know what he taught me? It taught me when you have opportunities in life, you make the most of them, right? And when you have an opportunity, be prepared for the opportunities that you have. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> I learned from a young age to do the work, right? And whatever is facing you, do the work, right? If you don't do the work, you have no chance at success. Doing the work does not guarantee you success. Doing the work guarantees you have the chance for success when the opportunity knocks. And I learned that from my mother. So I remember being, mm, gosh, I was probably 13, 14 years old, and I'm standing at the end of a little gravel driveway in Sharpsburg, Georgia, and <clears throat> there's seven kids. And uh, I remember watching my mom back out of that driveway and go get her real estate license. And within three years, she's a top selling real estate agent in Galway County, and she put seven kids through school. And, so all throughout the course of my life, whenever I thought I had it bad, or whenever I thought I had it tough, I just always remember my mom. So thank you, mom. <clears throat> the um, transition to Georgia Tech. So um, <clears throat> I'll just tell you my favorite thing about Georgia Tech. My favorite thing about Georgia Tech is my sophomore year, and uh, I, was, uh, I, I got a phone call. And it was a guy on the team, lived down the hall. His name is Brian Bravey. And Bravey goes, Chief. He goes, I need you to come down to my room and get this chick out of here. I'm like, sure, I'm up for that. So I go down to the room, and he wanted to be in there with his girl, right? And so I was in there, and I'm, I'm, I'm like going to, you know, I'm supposed to run interference and get the other girl that was in the room out. So I go walking in, I see her, I'm like, hey, how are you? Good to see you. And I threw my whole game out there in like 30 seconds. She was very unimpressed. And uh, <clears throat> she, she, within a few minutes shortly thereafter, decided to make her exit. Well, now at that time, George Tech, Techwood Homes was next to it and wasn't safe. So I let her know, I said, this is not a safe place. I'm gonna walk you to your car. She goes, I, I, I'll be fine. I kind of, you know, walked her, half chased her out to her car. And I <clears throat> am, you know, we're at the car and I'm, I'm working to get her phone number. And she's telling me she's not gonna give me her phone number. 
And I said, why, why, why won't you give me your phone number? She goes, well, you, you don't even have anything to write with. You don't even know how to remember. So dumb and smart, remember that. So I said, hey, I said, just tell me your number. I know, I'll, I'll remember. She goes, no, you won't. So I still remember, and I called that number. That following Monday, I called 770-920-1707. And Fairburn Chiropractic answers the phone. And I thought, my goodness, Fairburn Chiropractic, what is going on here? And then I said, well, I'm looking for somebody named Shelly. And there was a long pause. And I thought, oh, this is you, isn't it? She says, yes, it is. <laughs> I said, so you didn't even give me your real number. She goes, well, I didn't think you were going to call. I said, well, I did. <laughs> and so Georgia Tech gave me my beautiful bride of 25 years, Shelly Cheever. So thank you. Jacksonville, as you heard, there was, there was highs and then there was, there was uh, the end uh, as, as an athlete. And here's the thing that I learned about being an athlete is <clears throat> you will be done being an athlete when you are young. And it does not matter how good you are, it does not matter how hard you work, you will be young when you are done being an athlete. And <clears throat> what I also learned is, is that the stories that we tell ourselves create the future that we will have for ourselves. And <clears throat> the... Um, I'm thankful again to my family for always giving me positivity to tell a story because the stories that I tell myself are always positive no matter what I'm going through. Um, <clears throat> two last things. So one is my two favorite moments in sports. So <clears throat> my two favorite moments in sports both came on the soccer field um, and, 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 and they were not watching the fastest white boy that I've ever played with, <laughs> Walter Drake. All right, it was amazing. Our whole defensive strategy, our whole strategy in soccer, period, was Coach Quisenberry was like, now listen, everybody hunker down, we're gonna get the ball, and we're gonna kick it to Walter, and he's gonna chase it down and score. And that actually worked, and we went to the state playoffs without much else going for that team other than Walter Drake. All right, so it's fun. Forrest, Forrest Poole is a good midfielder, I'll, I'll give that. Um, and so my two favorite moments in sports came on the soccer field, and, and uh, um, there's a team I had, and, and Wendell Watson, thank you for helping me plant that team, these, both these teams, but, um, is uh, we would laugh. So we had my, my daughter's team and my son's team. And, and my daughter's team, my daughter started a little later in soccer than, than my son's team. So my son's team, we got them early, right? And so we had them all coached up. We had them ready to go. My daughter's team, we got a little later. And so when you, when you go to the YMCA and you get a soccer team and you catch them a little later, you kind of get the players that don't have another team. And so we really struggled with that team. Um, so those, were, those games were on typically Saturday. And then on Sunday, uh, we had the boys' games. And we would typically win those games. Um, and so my daughter's team, we, uh, we started off and we got beat pretty bad pretty much every game. And, and then the second season, we got a little bit better. The third season, there was this team that was kind of like our son's, my son's team, um, <clears throat> and they won every game pretty much. And, and um, I tell you what, we went out there, we beat that team of girls, and the Peppermint Dragons, when we won that game, y'all, I'm just going to tell you, that was, that was one of the highlights of my, my sporting career, all right? Beating the, when the Peppermint Dragons beat that, there were some girls that were out there, and they were so mad, they were crying, and I was so happy, i got to be honest with you. <laughs> Uh, my son's team, uh, we actually at the YMCA, um, <clears throat> and the YMCA does not typically compete with the higher level academy programs like SSA and NASA and UFA and these, these programs. So they didn't like it very much when the YMCA showed up and put it to them, right? And, and uh, we won uh, the state championship at the U13 level. And uh, those two moments, I have to say, were the highlights of my athletic career. Um, and it gives me a great appreciation for the great coaches that I had. Um, because <clears throat> when you do it yourself, it's, it's cool. When you do it through someone else, it's amazing. And uh, so <clears throat> last thing <clears throat> is um, I had an opportunity to go back and say thank you to some of these amazing people who invested in me and who developed me and who gave of themselves their time, their talents, and their abilities to create who, I, who I've had the opportunity to become. And uh, one of those is Mitch Davis. And I went back and I saw Mitch. 
And uh, I told him, thank you. And in front of me, a human being that I just looked at like a grizzly bear broke down. And he, he, he had tears in his eyes. And he said, thank you. He said, Michael, because he said, I thought that's the worst move I ever made in my coaching career. And I'd never forgiven myself. And I said, Coach, I said, that year, without that year, I would have never been the football player I became. I would have never become the man that I've become because you held me to a standard and you demanded something of me and you made me pay the price. And so for the people who have invested in your life, I encourage you to go tell them thank you. And with that, I thank you all. Congratulations, Michael. <clears throat> In addition to inducting two outstanding coaches and two outstanding athletes tonight, the Coweta Hall of Fame would like to recognize two outstanding teams in our community. This year, Coweta County had two teams that won state championships, the Northgate Cheerleading Squad and the Noonan High School Ladies Softball Team. <clears throat> Northgate High's cheerleading squad captured the school's 11th state championship as they won the Class 5A title last November under the direction of head coach Taylor Callahan. Callahan, a former Northgate cheerleader herself who won four championships as a Viking, said leadership from her seniors was key to building a successful program. Seniors on this squad were Al Alyssa Brantley, Maddie Gordon, Ella Longmire, Riley Prey and Bobby Sedgwick. Competing against 16 other schools in the Class 5A competition in Macon, the Lady Vikings scored 103.5 to outdistance the other teams, Cambridge, Cartersville, Jefferson, and Chapel Hill. Two of the Lady Vikings region foes from Region 3 5A also qualified for state. McIntosh finished sixth and Harris County was 10th. Coach Taylor Callahan was assisted by Coach Kerry Schellhaas, and several players and coaches from that squad are here tonight, and I'd like to ask them to please stand up and introduce themselves. Is that everybody? Sorry. Congratulations. <laughs> Noonan High's Lady Cougars, after completing a 20 and 7 <coughs> regular season, roared through the postseason to capture the Class 6A State, State, State Softball Championship in Columbus. Coach Kerry Gilmore's team won seven straight postseason games, all shutouts. They defeated Shiloh, Etowah, and Blessed Trinity in the playoffs, and then the championship tournament, they took down Grovetown, South Effingham, and River Ridge to reach the state championship game. Their opponent was defending champion Pope High School, who came into the contest with a 33-4 record. Senior pitcher Maddie Ville continued her season-long mastery of opposing hitters. The Marshall University signee 
struck out nine in the game to give her team a 1-0 victory in the state championship trophy. Head coach Carrie Gilmore was assisted by coaches Allison Johns, Addison Lashley, Abby Garner, and Mark Gilmore. Will the Lady Cougar state champions please stand and introduce yourself. Our next inductee is Walter Drake. Walter Drake was born and raised in Newnan and was a two-sport star athlete during his days at Newnan High School. Excelling in soccer and basketball, he went on to a successful collegiate career on the hardwood. His senior year, Drake averaged 20 points a game and dished out an average of seven assists in leading the Cougars to a 20-7 record and the school's first trip to the state playoffs in nine years. He was named to the all-region team in Region 4 Quad A. On the soccer field, he lettered all four years and his senior campaign saw him score 29 goals in just 10 games to lead the entire state in scoring. Following high school, Drake earned a basketball scholarship to play at North Georgia College. A four-year letterman for the Saints, Drake was named to the all Gulf South Conference team his junior and senior years and was the team's leading scorer his senior year. He was also named North Georgia's most valuable player for his play and production his senior year. After his basketball eligibility was complete, he played soccer his senior year and was the team leader in assists and goals. Following college, Drake returned to Newnan, where he coached and taught at Newnan High School. Following his time as a coach, he went into administration where he was an assistant principal at Newnan for three years, athletic director at East Coweta High School for four years, principal at Evans Middle School for three years, and he's been in the central office and operations for the past 18 years. Walter Drake, 2024 inductee into the Coweta Sports Hall of Fame. Please welcome Walter Drake. Thank y'all very much. Uh, I want to thank the board for this honor. I really appreciate it. Trey, Otis being uh, part of that group. Uh, Cheryl for getting everything together here. Uh, and Hugh for doing all the videos. Y'all did a great job on all the videos. Also want to thank the inductees uh, and congratulate them. Seemed like it's a Noonan reunion up here. Uh, Blake, of course, played at Noonan. He coached me, like he mentioned. Did a great job. Uh, he was my JV coach, and he was the assistant for the varsity. Blake, we did have three pointers back then. Uh, <laughs> they just come about our junior and senior year. So, uh, Lisa, Lisa came and started with me uh, at Noonan High School. She taught, bi was it biology? I thought it was, okay. Biology and uh, coach softball and did a great job. Michael, uh, like he mentioned earlier, he and I played basketball together, uh, and played soccer together. One thing I will have to mention about Michael, he, he's got a bunch of stories, but I got one on him too. <laughs> he did mention that I scored a few goals my senior year, and a lot of them were really credited to him because he was 
playing defense. He was the biggest thing on the field. And what we did was coach would sub him in on a throw in. Michael could take the ball and throw the ball halfway across the field. It was just like a corner kick. So every time they would be out there, I was like, this is great. Get Michael over there to throw the ball. And it'd be in the middle of, I think I scored about four times on him throwing the ball completely over the field so we could, we could score. So that's a story on him. I gotta put these on these days because I can't see anything. <laughs> Growing up in our neighborhood, uh, we had a great group of people. Uh, had guys like John Jones, Jim Wicker, J.P. Vincent, Daniel Barron, Martin Worth, to mention a few, and we all grew up together and we played together. Uh, we had several opportunities to, I guess, play against each other in the rec leagues and all that, and that created that fire that we all had. Basketball was always my first love, even though soccer was probably my best sport. But not many people put me and basketball together. You're talking about a five foot 10 guy, okay? So most of the time people would say, uh, what sport do you play? Uh, baseball? Do you play soccer? Are you football? No, I play basketball. Oh, you do play basketball. Oh, okay. Um, and it's kind of like, the best way I can describe it is if a six eight guy walks in and you go, do you swim? No, that, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. So that's not, that's not part of it. So to be good in basketball, I really had to put the work in. And Michael talked about putting the work in a lot too. And that's what you have to do. I worked out religiously. Uh, ran sprints up and down the neighbor's driveway all the time because ours was flat. We had neighbors that there had a hill, so I'd always get over there on the neighbor's driveway and run up and down the driveway. I went to the rec department. Anytime that you played sports in Noonan High back in the 80s, the rec department, Carl McKnight uh, was over at the rec department a lot, and uh, all the great players, I'd say, that were back in the day always went to the rec department. You played, I mean, high school players, college players, even players that played semi-pro. They came from LaGrange, they came from Griffin. So if you could play, you were there. Um, that place really, you know, everybody that's probably been up here has had a time to where you become good at what you do. And that, that was really mine. You know, you've heard the term, it's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up, and I got knocked down plenty. I'd go play, and I was probably one of the smallest ones in there, but I kept taking the ball to the basket, and I'd get punched against the wall. I'd get right back up, do the same thing again, until those guys were like, this guy's not gonna quit. Well, I'm just gonna keep coming at you, and that's what I did. So uh, I learned a lot down there from those guys. Um, we bought, worked out, uh, w one thing, J.P. Vincent uh, played basketball with me, uh, played guard. He and I went to an all-star camp. It was BC all-star camp back then, I believe between our junior and senior year. And uh, some of y'all might remember this. They had these platform shoes that, you remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> and so they came up there and they were like, these shoes will make you faster and you can jump higher if you buy these shoes. Well, we bought the shoes and we worked out constantly on the shoes. What they forgot to tell you is probably gonna bust your Achilles and so about eight years later, I had Achilles surgery. So that's, that was, but it did make you faster and it did make you jump higher. You just had to keep working on it. But those of y'all remember, y'all know what I'm talking about. So, uh, but I get asked usually I know you played on college teams, I know you've done this, but what was your favorite team you played on? And my basketball team my senior year was probably my favorite team. Um, that team was not the most talented by any stretch that I played on, but we played together and we played for each other the whole year. Our coach, Terrell Reed, uh, probably one of the best basketball coaches, that guy could get you to run through a wall. Loved him. Great guy. He came up to me my uh, between my junior and senior year, and I think up to John Phillip too, he said, look, we've got to do two things. He says, our biggest guy is 6'4", and he plays basketball. He, well, he, yeah, he played basketball, but he was mainly a football player, James Warner. 
He said, the rest of y'all are 5'10", probably 6'1", 6'2". He said, we've got to shoot the three ball and we've got to press. He says, we've got to do that if we're gonna get to where we wanna go and that's the state playoffs. And that's what we did. We would get on the line, Michael was talking about running. Lord, we would go, Michael probably remembers this, we'd run line drills every day. I mean, five or six of them. And if you've ever run a line drill, that's going from free throw line back, half court line, free throw line back, in line back. We could do it in 26 seconds as a team. And that's pretty quick. And that's all the guys that played. And uh, we were pressing everybody. A lot of the teams, Griffin had the best team in the state of Georgia that year. They had a guy that uh, was, what, what was he, number one player in the nation? I mean, it was crazy. Yep. And uh, so we, that was our only way to do it. And we made the state playoffs and we did, we did well. Um, there was something else I was gonna tell you also. Um, he did say, uh, oh, I know what it was. Though, when I talked to Terrell, this was, gosh, maybe a couple of years before he got sick. He said, do you realize that during your senior year, we sold out six out of the, out of the 11 home basketball games that y'all played? I said, what? He said, yeah, six times it was sold out. They wouldn't let anybody else in the game. In one of those games, I remember Jerome Walton, who most of y'all probably remember, played baseball. He played for the Cubs, and he was trying to come down and get to the game. They wouldn't let him in the game. I was like, my gosh, that's, that's great if we're going we're gonna to do that. So it was a fun style to play. It was a fun style to watch. And you can credit all that to Terrell Reed and Blake Bass. They were the orchestrators of that and did a great job. After basketball season, I moved to play soccer. I had some great teammates. Like Michael said, I, and the video said, I was lucky enough to score all those goals. And I was able to do that because I had a lot of great teammates. And they were able to get me the ball and I was able to shine because of them. And I really appreciate it. Uh, after that, I went to North Georgia, had a great career, really enjoyed it. And uh, just, there's no better place than Coweta County. I mean, you can go wherever you want to go, but the people here, that's the reason I came back, and I love it here. And I want to thank all of you for this honor and this opportunity. Thank you very much. Walter, I'm surprised you didn't say your favorite team was one, me, you, and Frank Farmer Church League basketball team. We had a pretty good team, too. We had a good time. Yeah. Our last inductee is Coach Lisa Skelton. Lisa Skelton coached high school sports in Coweta County for 30 years. During that time, she won two state championships and more than 650 games as a softball coach. In addition to softball, she coached tennis, volleyball, basketball, and soccer at Noonan and Northgate High Schools. Skelton was born in Aberdeen, Mississippi. In high school, she excelled in softball, basketball, and tennis. On the softball diamond, she was named MVP three times and was a four-time MVP on the tennis court. She became the first girl in school history to receive the Bulldog Award, the highest honor given to a student athlete. Skelton earned a fast-pitch softball scholarship to the Mississippi University for Women and she was named second team All-American her junior year. In 1989, Skelton was named the head coach of both softball and tennis at Noonan High School. Her Lady Cougar softball teams were region runner-up five times. On the tennis court, she coached the Lady Cougars for 10 seasons, where she won three region championships and twice finished in the top three in the state. 2002, she was hired as head coach of 
the softball and tennis teams at Northgate High School. Her legacy at Northgate included winning eight region championships, four appearances in the state finals, and 13 Elite Eight appearances. Class Quad A state championships in 2007 and 2011. Skelton was twice named the Class Quad A State Coach of the Year and was named Region Coach of the Year eight times. And in 2021, she was inducted into the Georgia Dugout Club Association Hall of Fame. Lisa Skelton, 2024 inductee into the Coweta Sports Hall of Fame. Please welcome Lisa Skelton. I see they save the best to last, so uh, I'll get you guys out of here quick. I'm used to being surrounded by all this testosterone, so I have three older brothers who um, surprised me tonight and came in from Mississippi and Arizona. So uh, I would not say I got my athletic ability from them, but uh, they were a huge part of uh, growing up with uh, some great people. I also would like to thank the uh, Hall of Fame inductees, and you guys, uh, you're right, Walter, it's like a reunion up here just being surrounded. A lot of stories I have, but I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because I know uh, we got other places we might wanna be, but just seeing some people that I've worked with, that I've coached and just being around is, is just amazing to see the history of sports that County County has. As you heard from the video, um, I am from Mississippi. There's a lot of great people that work in County County that started in Mississippi. I might be the one up here accepting this award but it's all the people who have supported me through all these years that have allowed me to have the success that I have had here in Coweta County. It starts with so many people. But first and foremost, I just want to thank God, my Lord and Savior, because without his favor and blessings, this result would never have happened. So that's always first and foremost. My family, of course, only a coach knows the sacrifices that the family makes for them to be successful at what they do. Because they're not only passionate about their family, they're passionate about what they do and who they might impact and the impact that others have on them. So tonight, I'm happy to have Damon, my husband, who you know was also my assistant coach for lots of years. <laughs> Um, he's my assistant forever, which is awesome. Um, I have here tonight my son, Skylar Skelton, who I will honestly say that after his sister graduated from high school, has never watched another softball game in his life. <laughs> my daughter, Forrest, who I was happy to coach throughout her whole career, could not be here tonight, but she orchestrated getting my brothers here, and I appreciate that. She's in Hawaii. Somebody has to be there, right? Um, but her, and of course, you saw a picture of my grandkids. And uh, she, of course, is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about what I do and what I've done. And then, of course, my sister-in-law is for being here tonight. You guys, it's, it's awesome. I appreciate it. Um, the administrators that I've had throughout the years, I see some people here. It is just amazing that we as coaches cannot do what we do without your support. Sometimes we might gripe and complain about the things you put us through, <laughs> but we know when it comes down to it, you have our back. And I've had some amazing administrators through the years. Therese Redicop is here from Northgate, Assistant Principal Jan Franks. But of course, it all started with Alan Wood and Max Bass. Now, you all know Max Bass, you all know Alan Wood. So when this girl came over from Mississippi in 1989, and that's the first two people that you meet? I almost went back to Mississippi. <laughs> I'll be honest. I remember going through the, uh, the interview process and Alan showed me around, you know, and of course he was confused. He thought I was from Columbus, Georgia, by the way. Robin Miller, named from the past, interviewed me at Mississippi University of Women 
to come work here in Coward County. I didn't even know where Coward County was, but hey, it was a job and I thought I might get to coach. So I'm going through the interview process and Alan's showing me around and introduced me to Max Bass. Legendary Max Bass, I didn't know that. You know, he was just an older dude that was gonna give me a job. But I'll never forget what he said to me when Alan introduced me and he goes, you know, I went to grad school at Southern Miss. Do you know such and such? And I said, well, Max, I'm not from South Mississippi, I'm from North Mississippi. I don't know everybody in Mississippi, and not related to everybody in Mississippi. And he goes, you know, I really love people from Mississippi. I said, you do? He goes, yeah, they don't really have much and they appreciate what they get. <laughs> so I guess he was right. Because <laughs> I do appreciate what I have gotten from Coyote County. I have spent my whole teaching career and coaching career here in Coyote County. For 33 years, it has been home. It has been home to my children, and it has just been a wonderful place to bring up my children, and they've all participated in the sports programs that they have here. The opportunities that they allowed me to have has just gone on and on with people that I've coached who have now taken over the very programs that I started. And they continue the successes that we have only because of what the foundations that have been laid upon us. Terrell Reed, I love that man, one of the greatest Christian men I ever met. He taught me how to be not only a good coach, but a team player. Because we all can get stuck in our little coaching world. Oh, my coach is it, my sport is it. But it's not, it's a department. It's a group of people working together to impact wonderful people, the people that we coach and the people that we meet. They were a big part of helping me grow and learn. Because when you come in first job and you're given a position of a head coach of two sports, I knew nothing. <laughs> they taught me how to be a good coach. And people before me taught me how to be a good, good coach as well. Charlie Cheever, where are you at? I don't know if you remember this, but I coached you in tennis. No, I remember. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of my past players know there's two things that I, I love. Conditioning and more conditioning. And that hill at Noonan High School was awesome for that. Charlie played tennis for me one year. And he told me when I said, Charlie, we're going to go run out this track. He went, Coach, I'm a football player. We don't run like that. <laughs> well, today, Charlie, you're a tennis player. And he did. He ran it. But it's just the funny things like that that you remember the people that you coached. And I had the opportunity to coach a lot of wonderful ones. And it's with the support that all of you have given me, the support of my family, and support of my colleagues and administrators that I thank you tonight. My fellow inductees, wow, it's an honor to share this stage with you tonight. Coward County Hall of Fame, Rob Brass. Thank you for putting my name out there. I'll be honest, this is probably the most real clothes I've worn in two years. <laughs> I highly recommend retirement for all of you, okay? But uh, when I got that phone call, I really thought that the recognition of, of what I had accomplished here in Coyote County was over and done, and it's been a great. But it was really an honor just to be nominated, and I thank you for doing that, sir, so much. So I will leave you with this. I had a lot of skeletonisms when I was doing coaching. A lot of you might know them. But the last thing I always told my players when I left the building was make good choices because choices have consequences. I made a good choice 33 years ago when I came to Coyote County. You took me in, you made me family, and you're a big part of my success. I thank you. Let's give one more round of applause to our four inductees and our two state championship teams. The 
before I turn it over to Terry Head for our closing remarks, I'll remind you all again about the Coyote Sports Hall of Fame Scholarship Fund. And also, please remember to buy tickets and come back next year. This was a wonderful crowd, and that certainly makes the banquet more special for inductees if we have a big crowd. So please mark your calendar for next year and come back to our banquet. Terry? Wow. All I can say is wow. What do you guys think about that? The inductees of this year. Wow. When you, when you begin to think about Cuyahoga County sports, the legacy, the history, it, it blows me away. I grew up here. And just to look, Walter Drake is here. I've heard his name a thousand times. I met him a couple of months ago, and I'm sure we met years ago. But I said, man, you look familiar. What's your name? And just listening to the things that you've done, not only in high school, but once you left Coyote County Sports. Mike Achievers, wow. Lisa, phenomenal. Coach Blake, we have history. Sometimes I embarrass him when I see him. I give him a hug. Uh, 18 years ago, I moved back to Coyote County. Uh, the first person I reached out to was Blake Bass. I said, hey, I'm back in Coyote County. If I have time on my schedule. If you need anybody to help do anything, volunteer, whatever you need, I'm your guy, just give me a holler. He said, not at the moment, but get busy doing something. I am so thankful to be in Coyote County. I'm so thankful to be a part of the Coyote County Hall of Fame Committee. And I am just excited about what you guys actually have brought to this community. When you think about Coyote County sports, when you think about some of the things that you're doing here in Coyote County, it creates that sense of community. I know many of us have lived in other areas in different places, and you go somewhere and you don't feel a sense of community, right? But you come to Noonan, Georgia, you come to Coyote County, and you get all of this. It's a blessing. It is amazing. And I'm not going to keep you guys, but I just wanted to say, uh, give yourself a hand. You guys have created an awesome community. I'm glad to be back, be a part of it. So, so thank you guys for what you do to actually support Coyote County Sports Hall of Fame. You know, there, there's the saying about football players, faith, family, and football. We always talk about that. But at the end of the day, it's really faith, family, and community. Uh, the community that we've actually created here in Coyote County is a blessing to raise your kids. Uh, I've raised my daughter here, and it's just great to be home, to be a part of everything that's going on here in Coyote County. Before we leave tonight, I want to thank you guys for being available here. I want to thank the sponsors that made it possible. I also want to thank the high school students that are here. Uh, thank you guys for what you guys have contributed to Coyote County Sports. Thank you guys for what you're doing. Uh, the, the caterer, Dunks, Barbecue, uh, Cheryl and everybody else that actually helped make it possible and our audio video people. Thank you guys for what you guys are doing. Thank you guys for being out tonight. God bless you. Wish you guys safe travel home and hope to see you again next year. Continue Cuyahoga County strong. Continue the faith. God bless. Have a good night.